Hello. So today uh, we're going to go through the process of setting up some Buy Now buttons uh, using PayPal so that we can sell uh, digital products online. So uh, obviously to do this you will first need a PayPal account. So we're assuming you already have one of those because a lot of people do. Um, so go ahead and first step is to log into that account. And uh, so PayPal recently um, did a redesign and updated their entire um, user interface here, which you may have noticed. So things are um, a little bit different. They're in a little bit different places than they used to be. So um, if you're more used to the old version, then this may be useful to you so that you can, even if you know how to do this before, this might be useful uh, so that you can find all the things that you're familiar with in the new version. So, uh, first we need to uh, go up to the toolbar here and go to the tools uh, menu, which should bring a drop down. And so, if you don't see the buttons option in your list here, then you want to click on all tools. And then that'll take us to a page with all these different tools here. And a lot of these are useful. Um, so you want to scroll a bit. And right here, you'll see it says PayPal buttons. And uh, that's what we're looking for. So if you go ahead and click this heart, then it, it will now show up in this uh, drop down, as you can see. So it's right there now. See that? And then we'll just click open to uh, open up that screen. Okay, so as you can see, I have a lot of a lot of different payment buttons created in mine, so uh, you might not, and that's fine. So all you really need to concern yourself with over here on the right, you'll see this related items menu. I'm going to blow this up a little because it's kind of small and hard to see from here. Okay, so you want to click on create new button. And so, uh, That'll bring up this screen, and uh, so now we just uh, have to set up our uh, button and our product here. So uh, there are several different types of buttons uh, you'll see here in the drop down, the first option. So there's shopping cart, buy now, donations, gift certificates, subscriptions, automatic billing, and installment plans. So uh, you can technically set any of these up if you would like. However, we're going to today cover the simplest, uh, what I think is the simplest button, which uh, will be the buy now, which is the second option in the drop down. So we'll go ahead and choose that. And that'll change our little preview right here from the add to cart to the buy now. So uh, next we need to give it a name. So uh, let's say that. Uh, for this example, I am just going to use one of my previous um, digital products, Mashup Mastermind. Okay, that's the previous product. Um, we can leave the item ID blank, so we're not going to worry about that. Next is the price, so just enter price and dollar amount or whatever currency you're using. So I'm going to put $17 for this. Um, and down below that is uh, our several checkboxes uh, so that you can customize uh, your button. Um, the adding the drop down with the price option is more appropriate um, for a shopping cart uh, buttons in my opinion. So we're just we're going to leave that unchecked. Um, so pretty much all of that is unnecessary in this case. So we'll skip all of that and leave it as it is. Um, we don't need a shipping amount because this is a digital product so we won't be shipping anything. Um, tax, you can put whatever you'd like there, whatever is applicable. I'm going to leave it blank. Uh, next option is merchant account ID. So you have two options. You can use a secure merchant account ID or you can just use your primary email address which you log into PayPal with which is what I'm going to choose um, and you can decide that. Um, so after we're done with that, we're going to click on this step two, and that will bring this up. Um, save button at PayPal, we'll leave that checked so that we can 
uh, access the button later. Um, we don't need to check track inventory or profit and losses because this again is digital, so we'll leave those unchecked. So that's pretty much all we need to do in step two. And then uh, lastly, we will click on step three. And so this part is somewhat important. Okay. So customize the checkout pages. Uh, you certainly can do some of this if you'd like. Uh, the first one is, do you want to let your order change or customer change order quantities? So since this is digital, obviously the answer to that is no. So we'll leave it as no. Um, can your customer add special instructions and a message to you? That's not something we need to do either for digital. Do you need your customer's shipping address? No, make sure to check no on that. Um, so these next two text fields and checkboxes are very important. So uh, the first one is basically asking if you would like to redirect um, your customers to a certain URL or link when they cancel their purchase. So, I mean, I, I don't particularly think that's important in my case. If you do, then feel free to do that and check that box and enter the URL. I'm going to leave that blank. <coughs> However, the second field is important. So, we're definitely going to check that. So, this is where people are redirected after they finish the purchase, after they've paid for the product. So, we need to enter one of two things here essentially either a link to the actual file uh, wherever you are hosting it uh, whether that's on your website or uh, Dropbox I use Dropbox a lot or some other place that gives you a unique URL for the file that you're selling uh, or you can on your website set up a download page uh, and then link to those files from that page and and then you can enter that link for your website. So I'm just going to pull up a quick example so you guys can better understand what I'm talking about here. Okay. So, um, so I'm in WordPress here. Uh, and uh, a lot of people use WordPress, so hopefully it's pretty straightforward so we'll, we'll go to the pages menu here and so <clears throat> a an example I have for this exact thing would be a page like this um, and it would say uh, you know thank you for your purchase instead of thanks for getting in touch and then you would have links here that people can click on to download your product files that you have just sold them so uh, and the other method is to simply host your file in Dropbox and then put that URL here. Like, uh, for example, uh, Dropbox has a public folder in most accounts. I use Dropbox Pro and, uh, and that anything, any file saved in, in that folder is given its own unique public, publicly accessible URL that you can share and that you can use here. So, for example, So this is my public folder in Dropbox, and I'm going to actually find, so you'll see here is my Mashup Mastermind product. And uh, there's a lot of files that go with this product, so what I did was I zipped them all together into a, a zip file, which you can see here. And so if I want to just automatically trigger the download once they've paid, I would right-click this and copy the public link, and then I would, I would put that right here. And, uh, and then I would be done, and I'd click Create Button. And then if I would prefer to make a thank you page on my website, uh, where I instead stick that link that I just put into PayPal, I would do the same thing. So, I mean, real quick, since we're, since we're here anyway, we'll, uh, I'll show you quickly how to do that, in case you aren't familiar. Okay, so to do that here, we would just say download your product and then uh, highlight that text and then up here uh, the insert edit link icon we would click that and then we just we'd paste the same URL that we just put in PayPal for the zip folder in Dropbox and click apply and update the page 
I'm not going to do that, but we'll preview it so you can see. So it would say thank you for your purchase, and then the th link here, when you click it, as you can see, it triggers the download right here. So, and if you don't use your website, and then if and if we did this, then we would need to grab the um, the URL for this page, and then that would go in PayPal instead of the file URL. We put that there instead, and then they would download it from right here. So, hopefully, that makes sense. Um, and if you don't do this kind of page on your site, then uh, as soon as they finish paying, it will just trigger the download down here uh, like it did when we clicked this link. So hopefully that's all straightforward enough. Um, so it doesn't matter either way. Um, and then we'll, we're done, and we click Create button. Okay, and so now here um, it gives you two uh, options. It gives you a website code and also a link that you can use uh, via email. So uh, the, the website code sometimes uh, can cause problems, like especially if you're using WordPress. And so what I'm going to do is we're, we're going to ignore that. We're going to go to the email link, OK? So we'll click Select Code, and we'll right click, and we'll copy this link. And so then what you can do is actually uh, let's right click on this and go Open Image, a new tab. Okay, so save this image to your hard drive, and we'll do that to the desktop. Okay, so now I'll say that you are uh, in WordPress again. We'll close these for now. Okay, so say that you're making a page, a new page, where you want to put your buy button and uh, essentially a sales page to sell your product now that you have your button. So we'll just call this sales page example. Okay. So, oops. <laughs> and then, uh, so down here, uh, we'd go add media, upload files, and then uh, find that button graphic we just saved and we'll go upload that. And uh, insert into page. Okay. So, and then now what you could do is you could click on this right here like that. And uh, click, and then click on the insert link. And in this field here, what we're going to do is take our email link that we just copied and pasted. I just want to make double sure that that's the last thing I copied. And uh, we will put that URL right here and then click apply. So now this button should work. And uh, obviously you would want to put some text up here like buy my product, whatever. <laughs> obviously don't put that, but you know, be a little more creative. You know what I'm talking about though, I'm sure. So we'll just do that and then uh, I'll save this draft and we can preview it and see that, make sure that it works. Because always, always, always test your buttons and your pages and whatnot. So here's that, and we'll go ahead and click on this. And and uh, this little red warning is simply because uh, I'm I'm the owner of this account and I'm trying to pay with it. So obviously they won't let you do that. But anyhow, um. Uh, it, it's working. It's got the name up there. It's got the amount. Everything is right. So, um, so that works. That's the easiest way to do that. So, uh, yeah. Now you're you're pretty much set. So you can paste uh, this link, or you can use the code. Doesn't matter. Um, just make sure if you're going to use the website code that in WordPress you instead of using using the visual tab in the editor, you want to click the text tab. And then you just want to copy and paste the code that they give you right here as it is. And uh, and you're set. So I hope that you found this helpful. And if you have questions, feel free to leave a comment. Uh, thanks. Thanks for watching.